Good morning, everybody. I hope you're well. Thanks for joining me this morning. So today is uh, module three. And module three uh, is all about creating an additional story for your design. So the house we're drawing is a two story house, but uh, the principle for creating a first floor, a second floor and beyond um, is exactly the same. So you, um, I'll show you how you can copy your ground floor to create an extra floor. Um, so I'll show you also how you can then adapt uh, the first floor layout. I'll also show you how you can draw some different roof types. So we'll have a go at drawing a lean to roof, um, an apex roof and an apex valley roof. So that's uh, the scope of what we'll cover during today's training. So in exercise 11, um, we're going to create our first floor, our additional story for our house. So rather than having to draw each story of your building from scratch, you can copy and adapt your ground floor plan to create an upper floor. So in this ex exercise, we're going to copy the ground floor plan and create a first floor plan. But you can create multiple floors in this in this way. So if you had a, a three to a three story townhouse, you could copy your ground floor plan twice um, to create the, those additional stories. Or it might be that you copy your ground floor plan to create your first floor plan and then you copy your first floor plan to create your second floor plan. So the first thing we need to do when creating a new level is to create what we call the ground floor level. So each level of the building will have what we call a level and the levels tell plans express the order and the height of each of your levels. And from your levels, it can then stack them together to create uh, your elevations and also your 3D views of your building. So on the views and 3D tab, which is where we are already, you will see a button called level. So it's the fifth button from the left. If you click on where it says level, then this level dialog box opens up. So there's just a few things we need to check here. So first of all, the base height. So for the ground floor, the base height is simply ground level. So you could leave that set to zero. You can use the tab key on your keyboard to move to the next input box. So if you press tab, which is on the left hand side of your keyboard, that will move you down to the next box. So the next box deals with the wall height. So our walls are 2700 mil high, they're quite high walls. So simply type in the height of the walls. That's setting out the height of this particular level. Next, we have the level number. I guess we, again, we can press the tab key to move to the to the next option. So ensure the level is set to one for your ground floor. So that's simply saying the ground floor is the first level in our building. The first floor will be level number two. Uh, if we did a second floor, that would be level number three and so on. So it just tells Plans Express the order in which to stack these different levels. OK, so base height is zero because it's the ground floor, so it's uh, ground level the wall height tells plans express the height of the level and then we are just giving it a number so once those are set correctly we click OK and um, now plans express is ready to, to define the level so we're going to to um, first of all have a look at the command window so it's asking us to give a reference point the reference point is a point that you can choose on the building, which is the same all the way through. So you're going to have the same reference point on the ground floor, on the first floor, second floor if you had one, and so on. Um, the reference point, again, allows Plans Express to stack the levels on top of each other to create those elevations and 3D views. So for this design, I would suggest that you use the bottom left-hand corner of your uh, ground floor layout as your point of reference because this is going to be the same on every um, story of the building. So all we need to do is find that endpoint on the bottom left hand corner of our ground floor and left click to select that as the reference point. So next the command window tells us that we need to draw a box to, to define the level. So basically we're drawing a box around the ground floor plan to set the boundaries of the level so that Plans Express knows what to include in this level. So what I would do is um, start above and to the left 
of the ground floor plan. You could do a much smaller um, box to define the level, but I, I would always err on the side of making the level bigger rather than smaller, so you don't accidentally miss anything out from your uh, ground floor layout. So place your cursor above and to the left of the plans, then left click to place the first point of the box. And then as you move your cursor, you'll see that you are controlling the size and shape of this uh, box, this boundary. So again, the boundary is just telling Plans Express what to include in the level. So as I've done, move your mouse to the bottom uh, right of the plans. Again, give yourself plenty of space around the edge of the, the layout. And then again, left click to place the second corner of that level boundary. After a moment, you'll see a pink box appears that shows the boundary of your ground floor level. OK, so we've now set up our ground floor level. So Plans Express knows uh, what we want to include in that level. The reference point, you can see there's a pink compass point on the bottom left of the plans there. That shows us the reference point um, and it will use that to stack the um, different floors on top of each other. And when we first created the level, you'll remember we put in the base height, so where the level starts, and the wall height, so the top, uh, where, where the level goes up to. And it will use all that information to create our uh, lovely 3D views and elevations later on. So now we've defined that ground floor level, we can copy it and use it to create the first floor. If you click on the level, you'll get the dashed lines and you'll get those handles that just shows you the level is selected. So that's great. So once it's selected, you need to click your uh, scroll wheel on your mouse. So if you click the scroll wheel on your mouse, it brings up these middle click options. So there are different things you can do. Um, and the one we want, uh, the option we want is the copy selection option. So if you click copy selection, um, Plans Express then knows that we want to copy the level we've just selected. So it's asking for a reference point. When um, Plans Express talks about reference points, it just means a point on the drawing that it can use as a reference. So in this case, it wants to know uh, which part of the plans we want to um, place when we place our first floor plans, basically. So again, if we stick with the bottom left of the level, it tends to be the, the corner I work with, makes most sense to me. Um, so if you find the bottom left corner of the level, you'll find an endpoint there. Click to select that as your reference point. OK, so you'll see now if you move your cursor around that you are controlling the position of your first floor level. So it's creating a copy of the ground floor and this is the first floor level we're going to place. So the command window is telling us give the point to copy it to. So where, where do we want to place it? So what I suggest you do is um, hover your cursor over the bottom right endpoint of the ground floor. So what we're going to do is we're going to place the first floor layout to the right of the ground floor layout. So if we find that endpoint on the bottom right hand corner of our ground floor plans, we can use that as uh, the point we're going to place on our first floor plans. So to copy it, just click once more once you've found that endpoint. And then we get some copy plan options. So from here, we can um, finish off creating our first floor level and we can define, we can control which components we want to copy across to our first floor. So first of all, we are creating the level heights again. So the first option is the base height. So what's the base height of our first floor plan? Well, of course, the first floor starts where the ground floor ends. So 2,700 mil is correct. It's taken the wall height from our ground floor um, plan. So that's fine for our base height. Again, we can press the tab key to move along to the next um, option. So the next option is the wall height. Again, that's been copied from the ground floor level. It said, oh, well, if your ground floor walls are 2,700, then your first floor walls might be. But on this occasion, they're not. Um, let's say our first floor walls are 2,550. 
So simply type in the height of your first floor walls. So it might be the same as the ground floor. In some uh, circumstances, it might be different as in this case. So we set the wall height for our first floor level. And then it's given it a number automatically. It's, it's assuming this is level number two, which is correct because the ground floor is level one and this is level two. So that's absolutely fine. So that's that, that's the level uh, defined and set up for our first floor. Now we can go through these options and decide which items we want to copy across. So first of all, um, there's the option of whether we want to copy the external walls. Well, that's a bit of a no brainer, isn't it? So we'll leave that ticked. Um, then we can decide if we want to copy the doors within the external walls. So in this case, let's untick doors. We don't need any of those bifolds or front doors on our first floor um, layout. So untick doors to remove them from the first floor. The next option is windows. So do we want to copy the ground floor windows to the first floor? Leave that ticked for now. So they are copied across. You can always select and delete individual um, windows if you need to. So we'll leave windows ticked. Ticked. Um, we don't have any openings in this particular design, so we can we can ignore that option. Um, here you can um, fine tune the wall height for the external walls. So if that needs to be different for the external walls than the internal walls, we've got two different options here. But we'll leave the uh, the external wall height set to two five fifty. And then the bottom option is to remove the foundations and footings. So of course your ground floor walls have got foundations and footings in there and you're not going to want those in your first floor plan. So leave that ticked. Then have a little think about the internal wall options. So sometimes you might want to copy your internal walls. Um, I'm going to say let's untick the internal walls uh, on this occasion so that those internal walls are stripped out for your first floor. Then, of course, all the other options uh, are greyed out because they're not relevant if you're not having your internal walls. Uh, you could copy across your internal walls, but remove any doors. You could copy across your internal walls, but change the wall height if you needed to for those internal walls. OK, so once you're happy with your selections, all you need to do is click OK. And after a few moments, your first floor level appears. So I'm going to drag my page to the left, so I'm going to hold down the mouse wheel my scroll wheel and um, let's do it like that. Move my page to the left so that I can see my first floor plan. So you can see there the um, external walls have been copied, but the external walls, sorry, the external doors have been removed. The internal walls have been stripped out, but the staircase has been left. So you can see there we've got the shell of our first floor plan. And you can see from the 3D view, um, that Plans Express has stacked that first floor on top of the ground floor um, to create uh, the beginnings of our upstairs. So now we've done that work, let's save the project quickly. So if we go to the file menu and click, uh, hold your cursor over save and click save as. And at the end of the file name here, we'll just update the number. So save it as Upton Field 6, for example and then click Save. So we've got that latest version of our drawing saved. OK, so that's the beginning of our first floor, but of course we're going to need to adapt it a little bit um, to um, finish it off, basically. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to adapt the rear wall of our um, first floor plan, because in fact, this wall is actually uh, it goes straight across. We don't have the rear proje projection on our first floor because it's going to be a lean to roof over this projection here. So the first thing we need to do is um, change the configuration of that rear wall of the house. So to do that, if we click on the uh, rear wall on the right hand side, so we've cl left clicked on the wall to select it, you'll see the handles appear. If we want to stretch that wall, what we're going to do is stretch this wall over to the left hand side, we can use this left hand handle to do that. So again, if you left click on the handle, move your cursor around, you can see that you're now controlling that end point of the wall. So what we want to do is stretch it over to the um, left hand 
side of the house. Find that perpendicular point. You'll remember if you find a perpendicular point, you know your wall's going to be square. If you find a nearest snap point, it's not necessarily going to be square. So seek out that perpendicular uh, snap point. And then once you've found it, left click to extend the wall. It might take a moment to, to redraw it. And then you can click elsewhere on screen to uh, deselect that wall to, to drop it. Okay, I'll just do that again for you just to make sure you're clear on how to do it. So remember, if you make a mistake as well, press the undo button or press the escape key if you get in a bit of a pickle in the middle of doing it, press the escape key to, to drop what you're doing. Press the undo button if you need to go backwards. I just press the control and Z keys on my keyboard because remember control and Z undoes the last action as well. So click on the wall to select it. Then we get these handles at the end which allow us to stretch or trim the wall. So click on the blue handle on the left. So we're always clicking, clicking and releasing. We're not clicking and dragging at all. Um, move your cursor over to the left to find the left hand wall, find that perpendicular snap point and left click to stretch the wall. OK, so we've done that, but of course we're going to need to get rid of uh, the, the rear projection here. So we can click on the rear wall of the projection to select it. And then we can press the delete key on our keyboard to get rid of that wall. We've got this um, short stretch of wall on the right hand side of the projection. Again, left click to select it and press the delete key on your keyboard. Now, this wall is slightly different. If you look at the left hand wall, we don't want to delete it. We just want to trim it. We want to make it a bit shorter. So again, left click to select the wall and then click on the handle, the blue handle or purple, if it looks more purple on your screen. Click to select it and again we can um, find the relevant snap point to trim that wall to. So find a perpendicular snap point on the rear wall of the house and click to trim the wall. Okay, click anywhere else on screen to, um, to deselect the wall. So you can see how very quickly we have just adapted the walls there. If we have a look at the 3D model, so click and hold down your left mouse button to drag the model around. So there we go, we've um, changed the configuration of that rear wall of the first floor. Um, but of course we need to add some windows onto here. Um, so there are four uh, more windows across the rear of the house to add. If I just bring up um, this diagram here, so you can see we've got four additional windows to place. The first window is 665 mil from the left. So if we go back to Plans Express, so let's say we want to place windows of the same specification as the ones we've already placed. So Hopefully you can remember if you want to use the same spec of window or the same spec of anything, you can click on the icon um, on the menu and it will use uh, Plans Express will use the last used um, specification of window. So click on the window picture. It will automatically select uh, the same type of window as we've already drawn, assuming that's the last type of window you've drawn. If you have drawn something else, if you put a bay window in, for example, it will bring up the bay window specification, whatever is the last window spec uh, you selected. So we said this window wants to be 665 mil from the back left corner of the house. So I'll just go through the window uh, placing options again. So remember your cursor tells Plans Express whether to measure from the external side of the wall or the internal side. Of course, depending on um, where your corners are, that will give different measurements. So make sure your cursor is placed over the external side of the wall. The justification um, tells Plans Express whether to measure to the centre or to one end of the window. 
In this case, we want to measure to the left-hand side of the window. Remember, the justification uh, is different depending on um, where you're viewing it from. Now, in this case, we need to change justification to right. And there we can see it's now measuring to the left-hand side of the window, which is what we want. But the third thing we need to think about is um, which end of the wall Plans Express is measuring from. So at the moment, it's measuring from the right, from that other window we've got placed here, you can see. Um, we want it to measure from the left. So to change where the square brackets are, what we call the active dimension, we have to press the, the tab key on the keyboard. And you can see now the measurement is where we want it. So there's three things we've considered there. Where the cursor is placed, that controls the active um, measurement, whether the justification of the window is set correctly. And then finally, we press the tab key to make sure Plans Express is measuring from the, the correct end of the wall. So once those three settings are uh, correct, we can then type in the, the distance from that back left corner of the wall. So we're typing in 665 into the dimension box at the bottom right of the drawing area. And then when you place your cursor back on the wall, you'll see Plans Express is now measuring 665 mil from the back left corner. So once the measurement is correct, we can left click to place the window. So let's go back to our diagram. So the next window is 900 mil from the window we've just placed. So Plans Express will remember all of the settings we have just um, selected. So it, the justification is the same and the active dimension is in the same place. So it's all set up ready to measure and place the next window. So if we click into the dimension input box, type in 900, because at this time it's 900 mil from that left hand window. This time you'll see it doesn't matter if your cursor is over the uh, inside or the outside of the wall of the external wall because the dimension is exactly the same. Um, so as long as you've got 900 mil between those two windows, left click to place the next window. Okay, the gap to the next window is 1110 mil. So we're going to repeat exactly the same process. It's all set up as it needs to be, so all we need to do, type into the dimension box 1110 mil, and then checking that dimension's in the right place, left click to place the window. And then the final window is again 900 mil. from the window we've just placed. You can place it by eye if you can get it to say 900. If it's being a bit flighty, just type 900 into the dimension box. And then again, click to place the window. If your 3D view hasn't updated, you can just click the refresh button um, on the 3D view window. And you'll see those windows appear. We've got one more window to place, and it's a window here above where the front door uh, was. So I am going to um, click the right mouse button. Remember, whenever you right click, Plans Express will do the, the last thing you've done. So we've just drawn a window, I right clicked, it's ready to draw another window. So this window is going to be. 445 mil from the gable. So I'm just going to type in 445 into the input box. Oh, press enter to register it. Okay, so the active dimension again is already in the right place, so I can just right click to place the window. Again, if it doesn't automatically appear on your 3D view, you can click refresh to make it appear. Okay, so we've added our windows. And then, um, of course, you can carry on 
um, placing your internal walls, uh, putting the floor in, so it might be a suspended floor um, that you want to draw there. I won't do that now. Um, in the instructions I send over to you later, it will talk about placing the floor and the walls, and you can have a go at doing that if you want. Um, but what I'd like us to do is move on to um, drawing the roof, um, because that's obviously a, a key skill um, that we want you guys to be able to do. Um, what I can do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the drawing at this point. So I'm going to save as number seven. This is exercise 12, drawing a lean-to roof. So um, what we need to do is start by specifying the roof. So on the architectural tab, if we go to the roofs menu and click on the drop down menu, you'll see we've got all sorts of different roof types. And um, so we've got cut and truss roofs, we've got sips roofs, flat roofs, and there's also roof lights uh, that you can uh, put into your roofs once you've drawn them and, and V-luxes as well. So for our uh, lean-to roof, we're going to select the cut roof option and we're going to select a typical 30 degree cut roof template. So click on the top option there. So the dimensions wizard opens up. Remember only uh, the yellow input boxes will impact on your drawing. So they're the ones you need to focus on if you're plan it uh, if you're designing only uh, if you're estimating then you will want to have a look at the white input boxes as well so on page one you can see the pitch of the roof is set to 30 degrees when you're drawing a lean-to roof you only need to look at uh, the side one uh, input box here obviously the second side pitch of roof side two is for if you're doing uh, an apex roof and the note here reminds you for a lean-to roof, only type in the pitch on side one. Anything in this box will be ignored. So check your pitch is correct. Um, and here we've got an input on the thickness of the roof. Obviously, that will impact on your elevations. So you can tweak that if you need to. Uh, the height of the gable here um, under to the under, underside of the barn hip is only if you're doing a barn hip roof. So any dimensions that don't seem re relevant for the type of roof that you're going to draw, you can ignore. OK, so we'll ignore the barn hip option there. So if we click next. You'll see on the next screen, um, we've got input boxes here for the soffit width of the gables and the soffit width to the eaves. So. If you need to, you can tweak these here. If they need to be 150 mil, you could just adapt that accordingly. Of course, all of the dimensions are in meters. So we'll assume we're happy with those and click next. So on page three, we can set the height of the barge board. So again, tweak that if you need to. And the height of your fascias, they can be uh, adapted as well. And that will impact on all of your elevations. So those are the dimensions you need to review. If you're happy with those, you can just click Accept Defaults. So when you're drawing a roof, as well as the Dimensions Wizard, you get this extra um, uh, box popping up. This is where you select the roof shape that you want to draw. So you can see um, we've got a whole range of apex roofs, hipped roofs, barn hipped roofs. Uh, lean twos and lean twos with a hip end. So we want the fourth option down. You can click anywhere. Uh, you can click on the circle button. I think it's called a radio button. You can click where it says lean to roof. You can click on the diagram. It doesn't matter where you click. As long as it's selected, we can then click OK. So we've specified the roof type. We've tweaked those dimensions for things such as the uh, thickness of the roof, the soffit width the barge board height, fascia height, and so on. Um, and of course, crucially, the roof pitch we selected at the start as well. So Plans Express is now ready to draw our lean-to roof. There are four things we need to do, four clicks we need to do to place the lean-to roof. So always look at the 
command window for the on-screen instructions, which will guide you through the process. So the first uh, instruction is saying, indicate the wall line that the roof is on. Now Plans Express will take the wall plate height from the wall that you click on. Um, so in this case, I'm going to zoom in on this projection, this rear projection. If you zoom in, you're less likely to click on the wrong thing. So I want to click on this rear wall um, to indicate that that's the wall plate height. If I had selected that left hand wall, the wall plate height would have been totally wrong because it would have taken it from at the top of the first floor. So click on the rear wall of your projection and you'll see it should appear in pale grey hatching showing that it's selected. So I've managed to select the right wall this time. The command window now says indicate the outer corner of the building. Um, so the outer corner, if we look at the right hand side of our projection here, this is the outer corner of the roof, isn't it? So it's the bottom of the um, the bottom of the gable, the bottom of the, the slope of the lean-to roof. So click on that outer corner. And then the command window now says, um, indicate the second corner for the width of the roof. So again, we're looking at the gable end. The width is the gable end. And the second corner is here where the, the top of the slope of the lean-to will be. So click to place. Uh, that second corner at the top of the lean to. And then the final instruction we need to follow is indicate the corner for the length of the building. So it wants to know the length of this lean to roof. So find the endpoint on the opposite corner of the roof, on the opposite corner of the wall, I should say, and then uh, click to indicate that that is the length of the wall. And you'll see in your 3D view that the lean to roof appears. On our plans, we can see a red line indicating the outline of the lean-to roof. So whenever you draw a roof, this dialog box um, appears saying, do you want to um, consider adding any ceiling or other uh, sundry items for your roof? So purlins, binders, rainwater pipes, and so on. So I'm going to say yes, and I'm just going to show you how to draw a flat ceiling. So it says, do you want to place an area of flat ceiling? Yep. So here um, you can set the specification of the ceiling. Again, if you're estimating, you want to go through all of the options there. The key one for if you're just drawing is the height of the ceiling above floor level. So in this case, the ceiling is going to be 2.475 meters high. So you tweak that dimension as you need to and then click finish. And then all we need to do is locating appropriate snap points, click around the perimeter of um, the ceiling here. Then this box will come up again. Do you want to place an area of flat ceiling? It's asking you again, because in some cases you might want to place multiple areas of ceiling in one go in different areas. So we're going to click no to that. And then it's going to ask us all the other options. Do we want to place vault, a vaulted ceiling? No. Do we want to place bind, uh, purlins? Not at the moment. Same for binders and the same for rainwater pipes. So just go through those options. And of course you can uh, add them as you need to. But in this case, I'm going to um, going to leave them for now. Okay, so we've drawn our lean-to roof and we have also placed the ceiling. Once you place the ceilings, the ceilings will appear in your um, 3D view. So what I'm going to do actually, just to show you some of the options on the 3D view, there's um, a folder here called levels and you can select which levels uh, you want to show. So I'm going to switch off level two so I can hide my upper floor and then if I um, turn it around you can see the ceiling is now in place under our lean-to roof. So using those options in the visibility menu and then levels you can select which levels you want to show on your 3D 
um, view. That's quite handy if you are putting together a design and you want to be able to um, create like a 3D floor plan to show your client. You can um, uh, create your different levels as we're doing today and then you can take snapshots of the ground floor level, one of the first floor level and you can use it um, to show them to help them visualize what the what the design will be like. Okay, so we've um, drawn that lean-to roof and we have placed our ceiling just in that uh, area under the lean-to roof. So I'm going to save the drawing again. I'm going to go to File, Save As. Let's call it Upton Fields 8. Save. Okay. So now we're going to move on to exercise 13, which is drawing the main roof of the house. So in exercise 13, you'll practice specifying and drawing the main apex roof and also the uh, valley roof. When you're drawing a roof with multiple parts, you need to start by um, drawing the apex. Or if it's a hipped roof, draw the main hipped roof to start with and then you can add any valleys as required. So again, we're going to start by specifying the roof. So if we go to the roofs drop down menu, this time we're going to select a truss roof. And you need to select the pitch of roof, which is most appropriate. I'm going to go for the 45 degree truss roof template. So again, the dimensions wizard for the roof will open up. The pitch of the roof is set to 45 degrees. If you needed to tweak that slightly, then now's the time to do it. Again, you can review the thickness of the roof and change that if you need to. Review the soffit width to the gables and to the eaves. And review the height of the barge board and the faces. If you're happy with all of those, click accept defaults. And now we can uh, select the roof shape we want to select. You'll remember we can click anywhere here. So we're going to do the main apex uh, roof before, as I said. Um, when you select the apex option, you can also do a valley roof that way, or you can do an apex roof, a butting, a wall. So for any of those types of roof, you want to select the apex roof option. Once you've selected your roof configuration, click OK. And Plans Express is now ready to draw your apex roof. So I'm going to zoom in on the first floor plan. So the command window is telling me to indicate the wall line that the roof is on. And Plans Express will take the wall plate height from the wall we select. So you can click on any of the supporting walls. So I'm going to click on the rear wall of the house. The command window then says, indicate the first corner for the width of the building. So in the case of an apex roof, the width of the building means the gable end of the roof. So I'm going to use this uh, side, this right hand side of the, of the house as the uh, width of my roof. This is going to be one of the gable ends, of course. You could use the other end of the house. It doesn't matter which one you use, but just stick to the same side. So indicate the first corner for the width of the building. I'm going to click on the back right corner of the house. It then asks me to indicate the second corner for the width of the building. So the second um, point on the um, gable end of this apex roof. So I'm going to click on the front right corner. Then finally, it tells me to indicate the corner for the length of the building. So it wants to know the eaves length of the roof. Or it says you can tee into an existing wall or roof. So if you're doing a valley roof or um, abutting an existing wall, then you'd need to, to use that second half of the instruction there. You'd need to tee into um, an existing wall or roof. But for now, we just want to do the first half. We want to indicate the length of the roof. So we simply need to uh, click on one of the opposite corners of the, the roof. It doesn't matter which one we click on, actually. But I'm going to click on the back left corner. Uh, of the house. When we do that, the um, 
those red lines appear on screen showing the outline of the roof and the apex roof appears on our 3D view as well. That dialog box will pop up asking if we want to add flat ceiling, vaulted ceiling and so on. I'm going to click no for now. I'm going to, we can add that later on once we've drawn the valley roof. So if we have a look at the 3D view, we can see our apex roof has gone on there. It's looking pretty tidy at the back. Looks like I've lost my bifold door at some point. Hey ho, okay. Um, but what we obviously need to do now is add the apex valley roof to this gable. And um, when we place the roof, the software will automatically um, draw the gable as well. So let's have a go at drawing the valley roof. I'm going to drag my plans back a little bit so I can see that gable better. So the valley roof that we're going to draw now has the same specification as the apex, main apex roof we've just drawn. So I can click on the uh, roofs icon at the top of the menu to draw another wall with the same specification. So I'm going to click accept de defaults. And then again, I want to select the apex roof option. That will allow me to draw a, an apex valley roof. Click OK once you've selected the roof configuration. And again, Plans Express is now ready to draw that uh, roof. Follow the instructions, which will guide you through the process. So indicate the wall line that the roof is on. Plans Express will take the wall plate height from this wall. So I'm going to click on the front wall of the gable. Then the command window says, indicate the first corner for the width of the building. When it says width of the building, it's actually referring to the gable end. The gable end, of course, is going to be this front projection of our house. So I'm going to click on the front left corner of the uh, gable projection of this house. Then it says indicate the second corner for the width of the building. So I just need to click on the uh, right hand corner of the uh, gable projection. Now, this is the crucial step when you're drawing uh, a valley roof. Indicate the corner for the length of the building. Well, that doesn't quite apply uh, in this case. What we want to do is T into an existing roof. So when it says T, what it means is press the T key on your keyboard. So press the T key. And then it tells you to select the wall if you're abutting a wall or the roof if uh, this is a valley to T into. So all we need to do is click on this, uh, what will be the eaves line of the apex roof we've just drawn. Click on that line. And that tells Plans Express that our apex valley is teeing into that main apex roof. Now, um, this dialog box asks again if you want to add flat ceiling. We can click yes at this point. Click yes again. We do want to place flat ceiling. Review the height of the ceiling above floor level. So that's 2.475 for this house. Click finish. And then all we need to do, as we did before, is click around the um, perimeter of the, of the ceiling to place um, the ceiling here. You may need to zoom in so you can make sure you get the correct snap point to snap to. It will ask us if we want to place another area of flat ceiling. I'm going to click no. And then it will give us the other options for vaulted ceilings, bracing, and so on. So we can click no to those. And then if I zoom out, you can see we've completed our roof and our ceiling there. And the 3D view, now it's had time to think about it, it's drawn that gable and the valley there as you would expect. Not sure why it's not showing my um, bifold door. 
haven't deleted it, it's still there, how funny. It's obviously just having a little moment. Oh, there we go. Click refresh and it's sorted itself out. OK, so hopefully you can see now how we can uh, place our roofs on our drawing. Um, for the different shapes of roof, it's a slightly different process. So just look at the command window. Um, remember the first click that it's asking for, you just need to click on any wall which supports the roof and the software uh, will take the wall plate height from that wall. When it talks about the width of a roof, so if you're clicking to give the width of the roof, um, in the case of um, an apex roof, the width is always the gable end of the roof. And then the length is obviously the eaves length. Um, in the case of a lean-to roof, when it's talking about the width, it means um, the side walls here. And then the, the length, of course, is the length of the roof. Um, but if you just follow those instructions on, on screen, there's four or five steps to drawing each roof type. But Plans Express will guide you through the process. So hopefully um, you're beginning to see now how you can copy your ground floor plan and um, by creating a level and then copying the level to create uh, your upper floors. And of course, then you can adapt your plans. You can add windows as needed, draw your internal uh, walls for your upstairs, uh, place the suspended floor and so on. And then of course you can um, add your roof or different um, parts of your roof as needed depending on the configuration of the, of the roof you're drawing. Okay, two seconds, I'm just gonna um, get things set up for quiz at my end and then we'll get started. So the first question was, um, what do I have to do before I can copy my ground floor to create the first floor? Do I need to set up a layer for the ground floor? Do I need to add a floor to the ground floor layout? Do I need to set up the ground floor level? Or do I need to create an elevation of the ground floor? So which of those things do I need to do before I can copy the ground floor? Do I need to set up a layer for the ground floor? Do I need to add a floor, so draw the floor, a slab, whatever, to the ground floor? Do I need to set up the ground floor level or do I need to create an elevation for the ground floor? It's a bit of a tricky question to start with. Have a think, cast your votes. Remember, it's all anonymous. It's all a bit of fun and it gives me an opportunity just to go over some of the, the key points. OK, so the correct answer is actually um, the third answer there. You need to set up the ground floor level. So the level was the, the pink box that we drew around the ground floor that um, shows the boundaries of what to include in the level. And the level sets out the height of the floor. Um, and it tells Plans Express the order in which to stack uh, the floors. So. The answer is level. The level is what you need to set up before you can copy your ground floor to create your first floor. OK. I'll close that one down. OK, so carrying on with this theme of copying the ground floor. How do I copy the ground floor level? Do I need to right click on the level? So do you right click on the pink box? Do you select the level, middle click and click copy selection? Do you select the level, middle click and select delete entity? Or do you select the level, middle click and select modify? So if you want to copy that ground floor level that you've set up, how do you go about doing it? Give you a minute to have a think. Click on the answer you think is correct. OK, so the correct answer for that one is um, answer number two, uh, which you have rightly uh, clicked on. So, yeah, you need to select the level. So left click to, to select it, then you click the, the middle click, so your scroll wheel on your mouse, and then you can click copy selection. That's how to copy that ground floor in order to create the first floor. OK, brilliant. Well done with that one. So the next question is, which elements should I copy across to the first floor? So you can select which of the elements you want to copy from the ground floor to the, to the first floor. So should you just uh, copy across the external walls, external walls and windows, external walls, windows and doors, 
external walls, windows, doors, and internal walls? Or should you copy across whichever elements are useful in the first floor? Place your votes, please. So uh, that's correct. You've, you've all answered correctly. So it's the fifth option. You can copy over whatever elements are useful in your particular set of plans. Um, of course, you're always going to want the external walls there. Um, you might want to copy over the internal walls as well. Windows uh, are generally useful to copy and then you can delete any that you don't need and add any extras that you do. External doors, nine times out of ten, you're not going to want to copy those over. Um, so just tick the relevant tick boxes to copy over the elements which are useful um, in your particular drawing. OK, well done with that one. So we've got one more question um, for module three. So what different roof shapes can you draw with Plans Express? Can you draw uh, apex roofs, hip roofs, barn hip roofs, lean-to roofs, or all of the above? I think I finished with a nice, gentle, easy question at the end after <laughs> the uh, more complex ones. So that's right, you've, you've all answered correctly. Um, you can draw any of those roof shapes uh, with Plans Express. So once you've select your roof, selected your roof type from the drop-down menu and you have gone through the Dimensions Wizard, you're then given the uh, roof um, shape selection window and in there you can click on the type of roof that you want to draw. And that will determine the instructions that you're given on screen, which tell you what you need to click to draw the roof. OK, brilliant. Well done with that. So that's just a quick re recap of module three. So thanks for uh, joining me. I'll send the videos over to you with the instructions and things as soon as possible, because I know you're both keen to, um, to to play around a little bit more. So I'll get them over to you as soon as I can. Um, do practice as much as you can. Get in touch with us if you need any help with anything. Email uh, support at hbxl.co.uk or give us a call. Um, our next session is on Thursday. Um, Thursday is all about um, adding detail to the plans. So we've done the bulk of uh, the drawing of architectural items and we're going to be looking at adding detail like um, drawing the 2D elevations, adding dimension lines uh, and so on. Thank you for your time. As always, thanks for investing the time in um, our software and in um, a new way of um, working for you guys i know it, it does take it does take a bit of time doesn't it um to get up and running but i really appreciate you sticking with it and as i say um i'll send the recordings over to you get in touch if you need any help with with tech support and uh, i'll speak to you again on thursday all right have a, a really good afternoon a good day tomorrow and i'll catch up with you on uh, thursday thanks a lot guys